Hello everyone and welcome to another multiple apps workflow tutorial uh, from me, Eldrin, for Lobster Lumiere. Uh, today we'll be talking about Break of Proface and uh, Cinema 4D integration using our uh, previous character from um, our last tutorial um, about importing um, characters from DAS. Um, if you haven't watched that tutorial and uh, just want to take a chance to you know go see that and uh, see that workflow for importing that character into Cinema 4D, uh, then you can go ahead and watch that. Otherwise, let's begin. Um, we saved our character under our 3D modeling, importing from DAS. So we'll go ahead and open her up. And she's going to load in. And as we can see here, we basically textured her, uh, gave her a little bit of an environment, um, did some cleanup on the textures to make the dress less reflective. We added some subsurface scattering to give her skin a more realistic look. Um, and from Daz, we pretty much got our rig, and we also got our all-important poses, which will allow us to do various facial animations um, very easily here in Cinema 4D. Uh, if we render this, we've also got GI turned on, and it's uh, properly reflecting lights based on our HDR texture. from our uh, Grayscale Gorilla HDR Sky package. To speed up our rendering workflow, we'll probably turn off our GI tools. But our character's looking a little lively. However, we want to uh, add that depth of expression in the face that's just going to make her come to life even more for whatever animation we're producing. Right now we'll come here into global illumination and uh, we'll set the settings really low. We can also double click on this my render setting here and we can change this to low qual. I typically do this for my projects, have low quality settings. Uh, Geometry is fine here, should be okay. We have our low quality settings here and then uh, we can hold control and drag on this uh, render setting here to duplicate it and we can name this high qual and this can pretty much be our finishing render quality and we can use our best anti-aliasing and um, I found medium IR cache settings really do a very good job for the global illumination. Setting these to high uh, vastly increases the rendering time on my PC. See? Um, probably do the same on yours. And the medium seems to do a good enough job that the high settings aren't even really required. All right. Um, another thing I like to do with the irradiance cache is uh, or with general settings here in the IR is I'll often set it to camera animation. I found that these QMC settings, at least on my computer, um, possibly due to only having 12 gigs of RAM. Um, these settings actually crapped out my memory. Um, I reached uh, maximized memory. I'm looking into actually buying um, or building a couple of servers and trying to 
work on some of the Cinema 4D render set uh, uh, render farm settings. Um, and I'll probably show you guys a tutorial on that when I get around to uh, working with those things. Um, very interesting if you're trying to uh, design a a significant animation and uh, you need a lot more power and uh, a lot faster render of your scenes. Um, but anyway, back on topic here. Let's go into Breakle Pro Phase. Go ahead and save our Cinema 4D project with Control S. I recommend using Control S religiously. Um, in the last tutorial, we also set up auto save settings. So go back to that one if you want to look into how to set up your auto save settings so um, your backup of your scenes can be a little bit more seamless just in case there are memory error issues or your graphic card craps out, goes crazy, other things like that. All right. So, Breakle Proface uses the uh, Xbox 360 Connect. Um, you can also use the Microsoft Connect, uh, the Windows Connect, as it's as it's called, um, which is built specifically for Windows. Um, the Connect, the Connect is a uh, 3D depth sensor camera. Um, it has a uh, IR chip, a uh, a basic depth sensor camera and a basic color camera and it uses all those cameras together to basically get the proximity of a particular actor in front of the camera and to get an idea of where they are in space and then using that data you can drive a number of 3D applications and create a augmented virtual reality. It's a very beautiful system and um, when I bought mine in 2011 uh, during the Christmas season it was only hundred dollars so four hundred dollars potentially you can get a system that is capable of actually allowing you to create your own motion capture studio it's a really beautiful thing um, and with tools like face shift now uh, Brickle Connect and uh, Brickle's regular uh, motion capture Brickle Connect uh, solution you can create very very believable lifelike characters um, you can bring those animations into motion builder and quickly generate mocap and have that mocap drive your skeletons um, I'll be going over all that workflow in a later tutorial uh, for now we are more concentrated on um, just the facial animations uh, and these can be pretty much driven um, directly in Cinema 4D through the use of blend shapes we just need to do a little bit of preparation in Breakle Pro Face to uh, get the data how we need to get it so let's open up Breakle Pro Face And um, I've just recently reinstalled Breco Pro Face, so I need to install my license at some point. Um, but for this tutorial, it should be fine. All right. So here's me. Um, it's currently the morning time, and there's a, a lot of sunlight coming through that window. So um, a few issues um, I had when I was uh, designing, when I was uh, initially testing out things for this tutorial and trying to figure out uh, where I wanted to go with it. Um, the window was open, I was letting light in and uh, I pretty much had my my uh, ceiling lights turned off at the time. Um, and uh, with Breakle Pro Face, um, other, other uh, 3D sensor programs may work differently, um, mileage may vary, but uh, particularly with Breakle Pro Face, it uses the uh, the color channel as a method of um, acquiring uh, features of the face. Um, that being the case, you need to have a really good lighting situation. Um, no bright lights behind you like this uh, window was uh, creating because that uh, is going to ruin the uh, Breakle Pro Face's ability to read your face. 
All right, um, over here to my right, you can also see the depth uh, representation of me. Um, currently, I'm sitting close enough to the, sen uh, the sensor that um, it can't read any of my depth information, so it can't tell where my face is in relation to this scene. So I'm going to sit back a little bit. Um, another caveat. Uh, with the brickle connect and uh, the same thing happens with the uh, motion system as well when you use just brickle connect instead of brickle proface um, brickle has designed his tools in such a way that they're there they kind of work a little bit better if there is a camera operator um, case in point with this system uh, it does a poor job of recognizing my face while I have my glasses on and um, I'm virtually blind without them <laughs> so um, I have to kind of look at the interface kind of sort of do some visual memory of it and then set things up and then kind of sort of move back and range my face in such a way that I can get uh, it to see my face. Um, I could, since my mouse is wireless, I could technically put it on my lap and uh, use it all the way, but it doesn't help the fact that I can't actually see the interface from only six feet away. Terrible, terrible eyesight. Um, the Connect has a built-in audio uh, chip as well. It will uh, be able to record your audio. Uh, it does not record the best audio though. Um, right now I'm looking into a solution that will allow you to record your audio on a separate um, channel. My webcam does a lot better audio and I'm eventually looking into a, uh, a um, condenser mic system for these tutorials as well as for uh, true production. Um, but for right now, um, recording our audio will be great. Um, we don't want to record any video. We don't need the uh, the color representation of our video. Though this would be very useful if you're trying to use um, one of these tools to record point clouds and then animate yourself in 3D. I might do a tutorial on that in the future as well. Um, you have export options here. Your FBX options are great if you're using 3ds Max and Maya. Um, Brakel is programmed in some custom FBX data uh, that basically puts the uh, the blend shapes into their own user data fields and you can pretty much drive your morphs off of that. The problem with Cinema 4D is Cinema 4D's FBX import does not read uh, that custom shape data. Um, so we can actually turn off FBX export and we can actually use text file and actually we can actually turn back on FBX export and change this to FBX 7.3 um, with markers um, we can actually use the marker position data to drive some of our rig in Cinema 4D um, and some of uh, if you have custom rigs it can drive some custom rig points uh, which would be useful for things like the eyes and the jaw which um, benefit greatly from um, rig control. Uh, we won't be discussing rig control here, but it's nice to have that data um, there, that extra data, uh, so that you can later use it to drive um, bones. Uh, the text data is the most important though. Uh, the script that I have developed for you um, will actually be able to read this text data and it'll be able to pull out the uh, blend shapes and basically add them as keyframes to custom user data in Cinema 4D. And then with that custom data, we can drive our DAS rig. All right, beautiful. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and um, the camera is nicely settled on my desktop. It's um, about maybe half a foot below my chin just nicely resting on my table. It's, it's pointing forward pretty much the position. So now what we'll do is we'll uh, browse to a location to save our data. Um, 
a location probably similar to uh, our current project layout for uh, organization. So uh, 